man. You got some visitors, dog. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now, he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 the, you know, where we hanging out and what we doing. Um, we, we can't really disclose. What's going on there guys we back with another one and mace has responded to everything that's going on with diddy after the fact as you all know diddy seems to be on the run in the islands he took a private jet while his homes was getting raided you can see him pacing back and forth in miami visibly worried and stressed out about everything that's crumbling down on him right now and mace and cameron today brought up an interesting fact that I didn't know about the anniversary or what took place on the anniversary of the raid. And we're also going to look at Mason. This was on his show a while back. He explained why he took Cameron to Biggie instead of taking him, you know, directly to Puff. You know what I'm saying? So Mace already kind of saw some of the inner workings and I thought Puff was acting a little strange last year. You think about hearing it back on August 30th, uh, 2023, he gave Mace's publishing back out of nowhere after all this long battle and everything, right? Where, you know, artists want to eat based off of what they've done. And Mace, actually, when um, Biggie passed, he did a lot of writing for Puff, you know? So for artists, over time you know you would like to be able to get your publishing you know what i'm saying and and really reap the benefits of your labor especially when you yeah technically on paper you know you didn't run the business but being able to write all the lyrics and stuff that was providing the lion's share of the money at one time um uh, you just want to see you get rewarded for what you putting in and not get underpaid and doing so many different jobs and wearing all these different hats man so uh without further ado let's listen to what may said about taking him to biggie and also what he said about the raid let's peep a lot of people want to know and they always ask me this is that when you had your record deal why did you take me to biggie smalls and not bad boy Mm, that's the um man, it's almost gonna bring me to tears to say this. I just being that I saw you as as such a good friend, I wanted to put you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram. Yeah, I knew man. With Don't have me that's all out here crying yeah, and shit, it. man. I don't instantly want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would would do right by you. Right, so right. I, I thought he would do the. Best. Thank you, man. I I don't got time to start crying in here, murder, man. But I, I appreciate that. Yeah. As well, what you spoken to Puff lately? Do y'all talk or what? Well, actually, we not we not really on speaking terms, but you know, I still pray for the dude, and okay. I pray that all is well with him. Yeah. Okay. Well, Pete Diddy's supposed to be releasing a gospel album. What what came to your mind when you when you when you when you heard that? What 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 thoughts did you have? Y'all want me to answer that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, can rule Paul put out a gospel album? But don't you think that everybody can? Express themselves. Definitely. And, and if he, I mean, they himself. can. You ask me. I'm just okay. answering how you your host Mace and Camp. What's up, man? How you doing? Killer. I'm doing good, man. Reparations is getting closer and closer. <laughs> 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 I'll be sure to <laughs> give you your percentage. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with that money. That's all yours, man. I was on the next boat. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, man. Getting closer and closer. Closer huh, man? and closer. Okay. The big no, payback. You know, you, this has been the last year. It's really kind of been the big payback for you, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you kind of, you kind of. You kind of, you kind of uh, <laughs> last week, you went destiny. <laughs> yeah. You done destiny. <laughs> 
You know no. what? You know what happened yesterday, right? Yeah, man. That's what I'm trying to say. It's going what? crazy. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you start. What did you see that happen? Oh, yesterday was the anniversary of Biggie Small's album, 27 years yeah. later. That's what I see yesterday. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, that was real. It's amazing that 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 all of this would transpire on that on that day. What's crazy is is yesterday was Biggie Small's 27th anniversary of Life After Death. And it was also the Diplomat Immunity album, 21st anniversary. Mm. Shit, it's shit going on. It's shit going on, man. Yeah, man, I was just saying, this was, that day, oh, yesterday man. was kind of... That's airy, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. It was the same yeah, was that going was on crazy. That's kind of crazy, man. I had no idea that, you know, the internet lets you know... Because I don't be knowing these dates for my albums or other people's albums, but they will remind you, man. Yeah. That's all you see? In a lot. <laughs> well, that's what I, I see. Seen, that's what I always I see. seen helicopters all kinds <laughs> kind right. of stuff. Okay. It's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Well, I'm happy you guys are having a great day. And I want to just take that point and really reflect upon what he's saying. You know, you think about the release of Biggie's album and as far as their record label and what that was able to do and some of the remixes they were able to put out off of some songs that weren't originally on the album from that album, you know, it kind of was the thing that catapulted Puff to that next level. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as, you know, um, executive producing albums and different things like that, um, it, it it really that was his cash cow uh so to speak you know biggie was getting on all these remixes and all these different things when he was coming out so to see that this is happening um what is this what they say 30 years it had to be 1994 right or early 1995 when life after death I mean, not Life After Death, when Ready to Die came out. Um, it, it's just one of those things, like, and, and you know he knows the date because he was very instrumental in the project coming out and all that. So, you know, to think about that being a fact, you know, you think about that being a factor at play, is it's very eerie, like May said, you know, that, this happens on that day. Um, yeah, man. Diddy, I, I mean, again, we wasn't there, but it's a lot of accounts of people coming forward. You know, he settled out with Cassie, but more people just kept coming forth. I knew that was going to open the floodgates when that happened because we've seen it so many times. Sometimes you have people just looking for clout and just want to say something because it's the popular thing to do. But other times you feel like uh, people that weren't listened to before were blackballed. All the media was shut off from talking to them. Podcasts wouldn't have them on to different things. If they see one person get that type of point through, they'd be like, oh man, you know, I've been living with this so long and I didn't have an avenue, but it seems like right now is the time that we will be listened to. We'd be taken serious. If we had some allegations we wanted to bring to the forefront. So that's a part of it too. That's a different dynamic. And people is coming out and, and telling their truth, man. And, and the social media era and what can blow up like on Instagram, TikTok, all these places. It has really helped facilitate. One thing it has done is it has helped facilitate, you know, people's voice in a way where they may have not been may have not been heard in the past and mainstream media would have just cut their legs off from under them when they started saying certain things because they wanted relationships with the quote-unquote popular people but now you know the average joe blow if they come out with something viral enough they can create the same type of clicks or even more clicks um based off of information about the person you know and so you remember some of these celebrities used to get mad at these platforms. They wouldn't go on them and, you know, they have a beef and they and you would have like these podcast radio stations host and all this trying to get back in their good graces so they can get that interview. Well, now 
you know, if you you start turning your back on people as a celebrity and you got some skeletons in your closet, the people that want to talk about you will come forth in those pod in those podcasts and those platforms that you have separated yourself from and been talking about them or you know just won't do nothing with them they'll bring those people in now and this stuff will get out to the masses you know what i'm saying so i just thought that was eerie man but i'll be back later y'all let me know what you think in the comments don't forget to like share and subscribe to next time peace skip tweeted something and although i disagree with the tweet uh and and uh, hopefully uh skip would take it down no, i'm not gonna take it down oh. Skip. 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 Skip.